our job description as a mom and as a homeschooling mom is to show up. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with my friend, Carrie DeFrancisco. Again, it's just a fun name to say. I don't know. (laughs) It doesn't get much more fun than that. Hampton's fun, but it's not nearly as fun as DeFrancisco. That's a fun, fun name. Um, Thank you for being back with me, Carrie. I'm so glad to have you back today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. We are talking about simplifying our homeschool this week, and we're talking through Carrie's acronym, which is fantastic, on how to simplify our homeschool. And and again, she is a veteran homeschool mom with uh, just some great wisdom that she is sharing, and it's so encouraging to me, and I'm sure it is to you as well. So if you missed Monday and Wednesday, go back and listen to those, and then join us again uh, for today's episode. But before we jump back in, thank you so much to CT. Math for sponsoring this podcast. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, go to ctcmath.com and try them out. You will be surprised. You will be blessed. You will love them just like our family does. ctcmath.com. All right, Carrie. So we are talking about simplifying our homeschool this week. And so we're going through your acronym. Mm -hmm. And yesterday you, you gave us what all of the, the letters mean, but we'll uh, run through really quickly what we've already gone through. So we did S is start with the end in mind. I is include mm-hmm. others. M is Mark Twain. P is put the home back in homeschooling. And L is less is more. So we're now on the second I. What's mm-hmm. the second I? The second I is ignite their passions and whet their curiosities. And so I had to, again, remind myself that yes, the schoolwork is important, um, but it was my job um, as my, my kid's mom to, to find out what those passions were that yeah. God put in their hearts, um, because who knows how they were going to use their gifts and their passions um, for the kingdom of God, yeah. right? And so I wanted to make sure that our our time together, um, not just every day, not just every week, but our homeschool journey, that the kids had way, way more time um, during the week and in the afternoons to actually have time to pursue those passions. And, you know, and if it's one of those weird seasons where the kids are like, I don't know what I like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what my, my gift is, whatever, you know, to, to find things that for them to try. Sure. And then if they don't like it, then they don't like it. Um, but mama's intuition is usually pretty good. So a lot of the times that, you know, we put our kids in things, we know it's because they're, they're good at it or they're going to like it. But um, it's, it's the idea of setting time aside or making sure there's time mm-hmm. for them to, get outside and to play and to, um, you know, bang on the keyboard if that's their thing or to draw or to write in their own journals, whatever it is that they find um, that just ignites their, you know, makes that spark in their eye. Yeah. So just making sure you have time for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's super fun mm-hmm. as we are raising our kids to just watch those things come alive. And, and they are the things you say, you know, just spark them. You see that, you know, when, when mm-hmm. they start doing certain things, whether it's art or music or whatever, you see the things that excite them as they, you know, are growing into those, you know, especially middle school mm-hmm. and, and teen years, I find, you know, I found with mine, you know, like, I don't know, little kids, they just like to play, you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, even with, with, especially with my oldest, I mean, she had a baby doll in her arms at all times when she was little from the time she could hold a doll she always was carrying a baby doll and she still, she would carry a baby doll if it wouldn't be awkward. Well, actually she would just carry a real doll (laughs) or or a real baby if she could now (laughs) one day soon. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, we, we saw that in her from a young age, but now, you know, like she loves art and I didn't know that when she was a year or two old, but as she's gotten older, I could see that in her and, um, you know, my youngest one, she's a people person. Oh man, that girl loves people and she will do anything she can to be around people and converse with them. Mm -hmm. And so it's just fun. I I love being able to be the ones who are with them, who get to help them Mm -hmm. discover who they are and who God made them to be and and what gifts and talents he's given to them. So, so that is a fun one. Okay. So ignite their passions and curiosities um, and provide opportunities for them to be able to do those things. So, and not feel guilty and not feel guilty. (laughs) Yeah. And not feel guilty about allowing them free time. Right. Yeah. Because sometimes we think it's like a waste Mm -hmm. of time if they're not, you know, Mm -hmm. sitting down doing a math worksheet or something like that. We think, well, they're Mm -hmm. wasting time, but 
No. No, not necessarily. Yeah. All right. F, what's F? F stands for flexibility and fun. Yeah. And so um, I'm not very good at being flexible. And so I do <laughs> think the main reason God called me home to homeschool was to teach me mm -hmm. and not for me to teach the kids. Um, so learning to be flexible and to realize that even though I had a whole closet full of curriculum that my daughter loved and worked well for her and I saved it, right? Uh -huh. So that when Joe got to that age and we were gonna, you know, we were gonna do all the same stuff. Well, wouldn't you know it? He, he didn't like any of the <laughs> same things that my daughter did. He learned differently than she did. Uh -huh. um, and so you just have to learn to be flexible mm -hmm. um, and not to the point where, you know, you're always going on an Amazon binge, right? right? And so they don't get the fractions. And so you wind up spending hundreds of dollars buying all this new stuff for fractions or whatever it is. But, you know, to hang with something, hang with a curriculum mm -hmm. or hang with a class or whatever for a while. But, you know, come January when, you know, you're looking over um, how you're going to proceed for the second half of the year to, to have an honest come to Jesus conversation with God at that point, yeah. every mid year and be like, okay, what's really working? Yep. What's not working? What's not working at all? Like we haven't even started it. Um, and to, to have the obedience mm -hmm. and the courage yeah. to change course if you need to, yeah. you don't always need to. And like I said earlier, if the math program's working, keep using it until right. it doesn't work anymore. But there's going to be times where, yeah, it's just a different season, different kid, different whatever. And so you need to be flexible yeah, and you need to have fun. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fun is important. Mm -hmm. And flexibility is important yeah. as well. So, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. you know, you're absolutely right. We've done that many times. I actually, um, you know, I don't know, several episodes ago talked about how we got to February of our last school year with my oldest in, in 10th grade. And I was like, okay, this, what we've basically done for much of the first semester is just not working. And so I had a friend of mine who has graduated her kids and she came to my house and she sat with me and I laid it all out. And I was like, help me, you know, help me like rethink mm -hmm. this. And, and she did, and she was so helpful to me. And then I went to Brooklyn and said, okay, this is, we're, we're going to just kind of reinvent the, the second half of this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it was good. And I was really glad I did that because if we had kept going with what we did the first half of the year, and it doesn't, you don't even have to wait until the end of the first, you know, part of the year. If right. you decide two mm -hmm. months in that it's not working, step back, take a break right. and see what else might work better. Um, you know, don't, don't trudge along and yeah. suffer and don't make your kids suffer with you <laughs> along the way. Um, okay, what is why? So why is don't forget what your ultimate job description is. And yeah. so God doesn't call us to be perfect moms. He doesn't call us to be phenomenal teachers. He calls us to be faithful disciples. Mm -hmm. And so really our job description as a mom and as a homeschooling mom is to show up. Yeah. Is to just show up every day and just trust that the Lord is going to work mighty, mightily through through us. There will be big and small miracles. We may not see the fruit um, until maybe even when they're graduated. But um, our job is not um, to be this perfect Instagram mom or teacher. It's to be faithful disciples and show up just yeah. to be obedient. And that's what he calls us to be. So that's our ultimate job description. Yeah. Oh, love it. I love yeah. it. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts. And we say, this is what you do step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Carrie. Um, you had mentioned before, Carrie, that you have a book. Um, and, and of course, we talked about how it's great when you veteran homeschool moms write books and just help us who are still in it or those who are just getting started to figure it out. And so this book that you have, tell us about it, tell us what it's called and, and just break it apart for us really quickly. We have a few minutes left. Sure. It's called Just Breathe and Take a Sip of Coffee, Homeschool and Step with God. Um, and the main premise behind Just Breathe is the title. 
that um, my husband found me one day just in a heap of tears <laughs> because it was one of those days, right? And I just thought I was messing up the kids and there was mm -hmm. no way I could do this homeschooling thing. We were gonna have to put them back into school. And he looked me in the eye and he just said, just breathe. Yeah. You just need to calm down. And we prayed and he walked me through it. And then that's where this whole idea, this book came from with the whole simplifying and uh, trusting in the Lord, the whole idea of, of truly using Sabbath, the idea and the principle of Sabbath mm -hmm. um, and resting in the Lord um, as your main premise for homeschooling. But the book is basically um, two sections. It's uh, how to incorporate the idea of Sabbath, the principle of Sabbath throughout your entire um, day, your week, your your calendar, yeah. um, even taking a sabbatical year if that's necessary. And then the second half is about the simplified, like how to act once you trust the Lord yeah. and you start to really lean on him, then now we can start to simplify. So the second part of the book is the applicable, you know, let's get down to the nitty gritty part. Yeah. Okay. Wait, back up though. Cause you talked mm -hmm. about taking a sabbatical year. Sure. Did you actually do that with your kids? Did you take a year off? We did. We actually did it twice. The okay. first time was when I was pregnant with my son and it was a horrible pregnancy. Oh. And so, um, I was supposed to be homeschooling my daughter and I, it just, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. And so, um, in, in God's word, it tells us that the Lord wanted the Israelites to uh, have a sabbatical year where the, the land could mm -hmm. uh, lay fallow for a while yeah. and it could rest and that they would live. He would supply so much that they could live off of that and their fruits of their labor uh, for three years. And so I thought, you know what? I, I just had to look at that year as it was our Sabbath year that mm. I was just living off of God's provisions and what we had already planted mm -hmm. and nurtured, and we were just going to uh, live off of the fruits that God was providing um, that year. And so we did the bare minimum. You know, we, we went to park days. We, you know, we may have done some work sheets here and there and whatnot, but it truly wasn't what you would think yeah. of a homeschooling year. Uh, and it, and Actually, what happened that year is we were with a, a PSP that required state testing. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter had to do her standardized test that year. And I was deathly afraid because I knew in in the scope of things, we didn't yeah. really do any school. She was off the charts. Wow. And so I just looked at that and I said, God is so good yeah. because he really did do the teaching for me, just like Isaiah 54, 13 says. And so that was the first time. And then the second time was when my, my dad came to live with us. Ah. And I just knew that um, this was going to be a year more of serving mm -hmm. and learning that whole education, that education is everywhere around us, not necessarily in the books. Yeah. And so we just spent a whole lot more time serving my dad, learning to cook, you know, just the kids learned an awful lot having my dad there. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. It's, we've yeah. known lots of families who have had to take years off. You know, we have one um, friend who she got cancer and she had four little kids mm -hmm. at home and she literally took a whole mm -hmm. year of school off um, though. They, they did stuff like you said, you know, it's not like they sat and watched TV for mm -hmm. an entire year. Uh, no. But mm -mm. <laughs> much of that year, all she could do was lay in bed and read to them because she was sick mm -hmm. and, um, and praise God, he healed her, um, from that cancer many years ago. Um, uh, but it. she still looks back on that Love year it. and she's like, oh, look what God did. I mean, he got us through that year, mm -hmm. got her through cancer and it was just amazing. And so he, he is so faithful. He is absolutely a mm -hmm. faithful God. So, so that is exciting. Um, you've got your book, you've got your podcast, which we mentioned before coffee with Carrie, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Carrie it's a homeschool homeschooling podcast. podcast. So what do you talk about? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you talk about homeschooling, but do you have guests on the podcast? Do you just bring encouragement on your own? How does that work? It's mostly me. Um, I try to set it up like we're having a coffee date. Yeah. And so it's me just kind of talking to you and you're listening. And that's kind of how I'm, I'm hoping uh, it feels as uh, you're listening to the podcast, but uh, every now and then, like uh, every maybe 10 weeks or so, I do an interview okay. uh, with someone. So I do have a few interviews here and there, okay. um, but it's basically encouragement. It's stuff like this, um, 
trying to give mamas ideas about ways that they can simplify, ways that they can do Sabbath schooling, um, how to do creative writing without a curriculum or, you know, whatever. So um, and then I do do uh, like every seventh week, I'll have a Bible study. So it's actual just encouragement straight from God's word. Okay. Um, right. And I try and imply it to our mom in our homeschooling. But yeah, it's pretty much for homeschooling moms, new, veteran, seasoned. Yeah. yeah. All of the above. Love mm-hmm. it. Okay. So speaking of new, veteran, seasoned, um, what <laughs> is the, the, the last thing? We just have a couple minutes left. What is one piece okay. of advice? If you could just give one piece of advice to moms, what would it be? lean on to the Lord and lean into the Lord because, um, you know, he called us to this. We can't do it without him. So just that idea of leaning into him, lean into your husband. If you're not married, find that one friend that you can lean into, um, lean into the challenges because they're there for a reason and you're going to learn more from the challenges than from the good days. So just, yeah, lean on the Lord and, and you've got this. Yeah. You've got this mamas. You can do it. Yep. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, for being with us this week. You've been a great encouragement to me, and I'm certain you've been a great encouragement to our audience. Um, So thank you. I appreciate your time this week. And you guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being part of the Schoolhouse Rock to Ministry. You listening to this makes you part of this ministry. So go and share it with your friends. Tell people about this podcast because people need the encouragement. They need the resources. They need to know that they can do this and that they need to lean on the Lord and that if they lean on the Lord, He's going to get them through every day. It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, but He's going to get them through it just like he's gotten you through it just like he's gotten Carrie and myself through it so share this with your friends we would really really appreciate it if you would do that if this podcast is a blessing to you we would love it if you would consider a donation to the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry so that we can continue doing what we do go to schoolhouserocked.com you can leave a one-time donation or you can do a monthly donation there as well Um, Thank you guys for listening. We love you. We pray for you. And we will be back with you on Monday with another fantastic guest. We'll see you then. Bye. Education is discipleship. And this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. 